We're in the kitchen this morning. Laura Curley joins us now from our kitchen at the grilling deck here at News Channel 18 with a nice chef's hat. Mr. Food esque. Yes, this is all thanks to our producer, yeah. Amber. She brought this in so I can look the part. Nice. You know how I feel about costumes. Well done, Amber, and you, Laura. It's very, yeah, I appreciate <laughs> it very much. All right, guys, so we're in the kitchen outside at the deck at WLFI, and this Saturday, Purdue is taking on Ball State at home, but it's also family day. And today we have Chef Ivan Petkoff here from Purdue to show us how to grill up some family favorites. Thanks for coming back. We had such a great time last time. Excellent. Thanks for having me. Um, we're going to start off with a black and gold burger. It is a burger that we serve in the John Purdue room at our lunch Bistro. Um, it's a half pound burger. It's a mix, 80% beef, 20% pork. It's handmade. And if you look here, there's a little bit of an indentation. That's a little secret to grilling hamburgers. Typically, when you make your hamburger, you don't want to pack it too much and make it into meatloaf. You just kind of want to form it. But you'll throw it on the grill and it'll blow up like a ball. Yes. So this little indentation here keeps it from blowing up and keeps it in the same shape as the half pound patty because that I, you know, i'm not a big uh hamburger eater however when i did eat hamburgers it was it's horrible when it's a big ball like that it's not very appetizing no it looks like a meatball on yeah. a sandwich and then it's all bun and meatball so this little indentation right here you just put your thumbprint in there just like that throw it on the grill and it'll be fine and you want it we talked about searing on the high heat and then cooking on the low heat last time so it's the same rules apply if you look here i have intense heat down here and i mm -hmm. have a little bit of a rake up um, all of this other food here that we'll talk about later has already been seared. It's got a nice sear on each side. We moved it to the low side. We're going to sear these burgers right here. We're going to get a nice crispy side mm -hmm. on each side. We'll flip it and then we'll put it back up here and we'll let it finish like an oven. Well, um, tell me a little bit about your students, what they're doing uh, over at Purdue this year and sort of how, how that works and how they tie into all of this. Excellent. Um, we have the John Purdue Room is a real live restaurant, and we have a lunch and a dinner service. The lunch is for our 200 level class, which is typically your sophomores, and our dinner is our 400 level class, which is our seniors that are about to graduate. Both classes are for students that are going to enter in, in the hospitality field, and they need to get experience working in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So your 200 level class have students who've never worked in a kitchen, let alone a restaurant, and we immerse them, we throw them right on the hotline, and we cook lunch. Now, the John Perdue Room is a real live restaurant, so we take walk-ins, we take reservations, we take parties of 30, 50, 60, whatever, and we ask anybody to come in to order off the menu to give that experience to our students. Both classes are completely student-ran. Wow. So it's a little intense and nerve-wracking for some of them. But what a great experience. As you said, some, mm -hmm. so many of them come in there, they have no idea. They've never worked in a restaurant before, and it's so good to learn those dynamics before they go out into the real world. Oh, absolutely. That's... It can, be, it can be overwhelming. The dynamics is an interesting part. It's not just about cooking and serving food. There's a lot of team building and understanding how to work like a team. And, you know, we've all been in a place where we've had challenges at work or mm -hmm. we have miscommunication, and that kind of stresses you out. Well, in this kitchen, it's amped up. It's stress on steroids. And they still have to remain focused and still communicate with effectiveness and still behave appropriately right. <laughs> and still try to get through the day. And sometimes they'll be crying at the end of the day. Sometimes they'll say to me, Chef, I'm never stepping into a kitchen again. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's an, it's an interesting, the dynamics part is very interesting. And that's the untold lesson that they learn that you can't learn in yeah. a park. Well, that's kind of like Top Chef, Purdue oh, yeah. style, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's how I always ended up in tears in my restaurant job. <laughs> so it's always good to get the, the kinks worked out. Excellent. But we have a lot more coming up with Chef Ivan. Stay with us this hour. We're going to be grilling up all hour. We'll send it back to you guys for now. Now it's called the In the Kitchen segment. Can we call it Cooking with Curtly today? Is that I a little like play? I like that. Okay. Yes. I like it. Cooking with Curtly. It awesome. Might, it might stick. Laura, okay. thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Look You're watching News Channel 18 this morning. News from where you live. And we've taken In the Kitchen outside. We're at the deck here at WLFI with Chef, Chef Ivan Petkoff from Purdue, who's telling us how to grill up some fa favorites for tailgating and whatnot. And we made some uh, some burgers earlier, and now we're moving on to the ribeyes. Right. This is a ribeye that's served in the John Purdue room for dinner. Um, typically, when you want to use steak, uh, try to get a nice cut of steak. My favorite is the ribeye. Um, so, but what you want to do is, it is a muscle, so before you cook it, you want it to come to room temperature 15 to 30 minutes. Um, so the meat is relaxed and, and not ready, you know, it's not still frozen or really cold. Because if it's frozen or really cold, you go from extreme cold to mm -hmm. extreme heat, the muscle will tighten. And that's when you get a really chewy cut of meat. Yeah. So you want it to come to room temp for about 15 to 30 minutes. Once that's happened, and I just do a kosher salt. 
little garlic, little kosher salt, cracked black pepper. I don't want to take too much flavor away from the cut of meat. And then again, on a high heat, we're going to put it down on high heat, let it sear the pores, flip it, sear the other side, move it to the low heat, and let it finish. Go ahead. Now, what about this marbling? I, I don't know much about meat, but I know that marbling is very important. Yes, marbling is the fat. That's that white strands that you see within the muscle. That adds flavor. You'll hear butchers or chefs say to you, oh, look at that beautiful marbling in that meat. And yes, that's all the flavor. That's what adds flavor to the meat. Now, in poultry, for example, the fat is in the skin. So if you remove the skin, you've removed all the fat. Whereas in meat, you can't do that. Okay, okay, so when you, you put it here, you put it on the high heat first. Yes. And you talked a little bit about that the last time, but just the difference when you're grilling and how important it is to sort of stagger. Sure. If you take a look here, I have airline chicken breast that I've seared off earlier. We have our burgers that we just put in. We have our sausage. We've seared them all nicely, got a nice sear in them, and now we moved them from this extreme high heat to the low heat, and we're just letting them cook slowly. That slow cooking finishing allows all the juices and flavors to really kick in the flavor. And about how long will that take to cook? Oh, it depends on what you like. Um, mm -hmm. Some people like it rare, some people like it medium or well done. I'm going to sear them for a couple of minutes. I'll t uh, test the temperature. I like mine about medium. So um, I would say about five to seven minutes, depending. Okay, and then coming up um, later on in the hour, we're going to sample all of this, which is going to be awesome. Um, I just uh, tasted some of that sausage. Now that's pretty special sausage there. Yes, that's my father's recipe. Okay, okay. Um, it's a, a family recipe we've had for years. He's from Eastern Europe. It's a recipe he brought when he came over to the United States. It's something that I was taught as a child, and I've now brought it to Purdue. And it's actually called Savacici. Many people can't pronounce or remember that name. Savacici. So right. And so we've gotten away with Eastern European or Greek sausage. And we serve that in the HTM as well. Okay. We'll have more on that coming up in our, our next segment. And we'll have uh, a tasting test, which, come on, guys, that's the best part of all. Uh, but for now, we'll be right back. Excellent. In the kitchen segment this morning has come to us here, West Lafayette, Indiana, a place where we know well here News Channel 18. Laura Curley joins us now from the grilling deck. Laura, good morning to you. Still have the hat on, still looking great. Thanks, Joe. The sun is even up, but we are already working on lunch and dinner and tailgating nice. goodies with Chef Ivan Petkoff from Purdue. And uh, the last segment, we were doing some ribeye grilling here, and we're going to move on, talk a little bit about this Eastern European uh, sausage, also known as. Savacici. Savacici. There you go. Yeah, got it. Well, anyway, so this is how it typically comes. Uh, we take a pita, we throw it on the grill, warm it through, cook it through. We do a nice um, combination of diced tomatoes, um, julienne, or sliced red onions. We mix it with a little olive oil, salt and pepper, and red wine vinegar. It is the vinegar that cleans the palate of the spice of the meat, mm. and the combination of the two is wonderful. Um, in some areas, um, especially in the the Greek area, mm -hmm. you can top this with tzatziki sauce. Mm -hmm. And tzatziki sauce is a yogurt, cucumber yogurt sauce. So um, we actually top it with tzatziki, but I wanted to do it more authentic for my family side in case they're watching. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so there you go, um, if you'd like to try Okay, that. I'm going to try it. I'm going to save some of the taste testing for the other kids when they come out here. Sure, but, absolutely. Okay, well while I'm eating, um, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about some of the other stuff you have on here and maybe some, some tricks to cooking sausage. Sure. Um, I have airline chicken, uh, it's a Mediterranean, again a Mediterranean um, marinade. What makes it an airline chicken is it has a drum bone in it, it's mm -hmm. got the wing bone in it and it's a boneless chicken breast. Um, again our burgers are sausage and we're doing our ribeyes. Um, delicious. <laughs> this is really good, I don't even eat sausage. Real quick, let's talk about the garden. Oh, okay. Um, recently I started working with the agricultural department, um, a professor, uh, Steve Hallett and Kevin Gibson. Uh, we've gotten together and we started talking about a student farm project for Purdue. Mm -hmm. We're land-grant college and currently we didn't have a student farm. Which is crazy, yeah. Yeah, so now um, we've put this farm together and we're basing it, it's at the Maxwell Track that's over by State uh, Road 26 in McCormick, just west of there. Um, but the whole object of this student farm is for an education tool. It's not for research per se. It is for our undergrad uh, students to learn about every aspect of farming, um, even agri hospitality, mm -hmm. which is for me local sourcing products and eggs and bringing it from field to fork or field to market type thing. So it's open to the entire university. Every study is invited. We had a call out about two weeks. About a hundred students showed up. Um, 
pretty cool. A diverse group of uh, students, so it was exciting, and it's moving forward really fast. That's an exciting prospect, especially uh, at this time when a lot of people are turning towards local foods once again and sort of making that a way to get our food. Right, absolutely. All right, absolutely. much more to come, including more taste tests. You guys are going to get to sample some of this, which I... I'm so excited for you guys because it's delicious. Yeah, we fit in the category of the kids. Excellent. They get to try it. Yeah. Kids at the station. <laughs> Kudos to Ivan for uh, answering questions with you chewing as you're asking. <laughs> I know, <them>. guys. <laughs> I know. Uh, and delicious, though. And it's so hard because you want to enjoy the, the bite, but you have to still interview, I guess. And get a sound bite. Nice. At the same time. <laughs> I looked up and you're like, oh. Appreciate it. Still <laughs> talking. Trying, trying to talk. And it's hard work, but somebody's got to do it, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> Tough assignments, yeah. I feel real bad for her. Yeah. At least this one's low or here, so we can actually go out and taste. Exactly. There's so many times she's been able to taste, and we've just been sitting here with our mouths. Some good news. Thanks for a breezy morning. We're smelling those mm -hmm. cooking smells if you just step outside our studio. Oh, absolutely. Not a bad start to our day at all. Temperatures warming up today, but rain chances, of course. Building in more details on that in just a bit. You're watching News Channel 18 this morning. News from where you live. And welcome back to In the Kitchen, outside of the deck at WLFI. We're putting the finishing touches on our tailgating menu here with Chef Ivan Petkoff from Purdue, who's been here all morning, showing us how to grill up some favorites. He's actually been grilling up some, uh, some vegetables here, and uh, we're going to be sampling some of the goodies. And what was the secret with the vegetables? Oh, so once you've had them marinated in your juice and if you cooked them, you can take that back and put them in a pan, let, cover them with tin foil. What's going to happen is all those vegetables are going to release some of their flavor and their moisture. Drain that and use that liquid, and you can make a vinaigrette and toss a salad in it, and it still has all that beautiful. I flavor. love that, and you don't have to worry about the salmonella issue because it's, it's vegetables. Cooked, right? Absolutely, not too bad. So then we have some chicken. We have the golden black burger, black and gold, black and gold burger. Yes, absolutely, and we have the savatchi and we have the ribeye. So I'm going to cook up some of this right now. All right, not too late. Which is your favorite, guys? No, I'm, get in I'm line. plate ready. <laughs> get your plate, McKenna. All right, get over there. Which is your favorite? Now, I, want to, I want to try what you tried. What was that? That's the sabachi cheese. cheese. We, yeah. looked, we Googled it from our, our news desk. <laughs> All right, that guy. Okay. I remember the veggies from last time. They were amazing. Yeah. They were so good last time. Pretty incredible. So we put a little bit of veggie here. Oh, As we're man. getting our food, Sarah, you're talking about we walked outside. It's a little it chilly out here, here right now. Man, Laura, I don't know how you're doing it in the short sleeve because just the skirt's bad enough. As we head out the door today, we are going to be warming up, though. There so if this will happen about eight hours from now, we'd be seeing temperatures in the 80s, and I'm sure this would be a much more different conversation about how we're sweating out here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, how big a bite did you take? That's, you? A, that's a lot bigger <laughs> than hers, I think. Well, I'm not a big sausage fan, but it was delicious. And I, I've eaten like half of it over there. Yeah, so. I see it. It's okay, right there. try it out, Joe. Okay. <laughs> a huge bite. <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs down. I see. Bite. It was awesome. I lost half the goodies there. <laughs> You don't want to dribble your goodie, that's for well, sure. Well, thank you so much, Ivan, for joining absolutely. us here today. Thank uh, you. It, was, it was a blast, and we're going to be trying out some more of the oh, food. Oh, absolutely. I highly recommend the sabachi chief. All right, and I'm there. We're going to have the recipe on the website, wlfi.com, in the kitchen segment. Have a great morning. The early show's up next.